it's crust today and Daisy say hi Daisy um we're going to do a video today um, to continue furtherly continue talking about uh, narcissism and uh, probably get into some more about addiction um, I'm using my own story today again as an example of <clears throat> as I start talking about narcissistic families and um when you do uh maybe start being closed off to maybe possibly uh, more toxic kinds of friends individuals relationships um job places um and also from your family uh units <laughs> where especially as far as addiction is concerned but I'm also talking about um, there's a lot of different ways that we can be addicted to things like we can be addicted to gambling overspending um, just any obsessive compulsive thing um, more toxic relationships um, drugs, alcohol, um, over-exercising, um, just you, overworking, you name it, um, anything that you can get that temporary fix on for a while to feel better. Um, you know, I think what often happens as I go back into the toxic relationship, starting from when we were children, um, how we were treated and depleted of a lot of energies where in a healthy um, family that um, love and everything would be mutually a give and take and kind of like flow like this where you're in a more narcissistic or toxic or more dysfunctional family where there's people over the caretakers or whatever are taking more than they are giving whether it be um sucking you emotionally um mentally or physically, you know, taking from you, whether it be uh, beatings of uh, the mind, body, soul, um, uh, especially a lot of it is within the emotional realm where uh, we are left um, growing up, not even be like being so used to giving it away to all these people who expect you to give it all the way to them until you have nothing for yourself. Um, just you grow up and then you, you are constantly attracted to um, all these relationships that are still like that, that are constantly just sucking you and taking everything out from you, you know. And even though it might be more subtler and sneakier, more conniving, like with a psychopath, which are a little bit more uh, calculative and uh, subtle in their doings, but still all the same, just as hideous, um, you know, it can leave you in just dire shape and... Um, whether you're going to start, whether that narcissistic family or relationship becomes finally uh, bored with you one day, like, a, you know, just like batting a mouse around, you know, where they get bored with that and go find another source to play with one day, like they, like they usually do in the end, because it's that cycle of um, honeymoon, they're going to love you and tell all these great things about you and give you all these things and just be like, I'm never going to do it again and everything's great, where they condition you with that, that, um, opiate or that, uh, level of, you know, dopamines, that fix on the dopamines and that, and it feels really wonderful for a while, just like on top of the world, everything's fine again, at least for a while, you know, 
and then it goes over into the next cycle which is the devaluing um, where it's all of a sudden they're being critical of you of the things that you do um, changing uh, what you think to what they're thinking um, even to more diabolical tactics like gaslighting and then making things all your fault and like all of a sudden um, everything poking at your most vulnerable areas and sensitivities and weaknesses and things um, you know is going to set you off into that crazy mode because you know you are running out of this energy um, they're just depleting you and sucking you like a vampire and then you're just uh, left with um, all your wounds open again and um, it can really anger a person it can make you know you can feel like you're really going nuts uh, and then you try to attack that person back just trying to defend yourself and then all of a sudden they're calling you an ogre and it's all your fault and suddenly you know even I know the verbal attack that came from uh, my mother the other day and my own children about uh, another fight about Thanksgiving just turned into like all of a sudden um, even my own daughter was threatening to call the police on me because I was confronting my mother again about uh, her, da her dastardly trying to really like a three-year-old because they're very very immature they're usually stuck on uh, levels where um, you know really young age lo emotional levels where they could never um, come out or mature in those areas um, you know and so it's just like okay all of a sudden she has my children turn against me for the thousandth time and all of a sudden she didn't do it and she's the victim and all of a sudden she's uh I told her that I was having Thanksgiving at my house this year with just my children um all of a sudden she started wailing and crying like a banshee a crazy banshee woman uh because she often oftentimes portray portrays a very very um pathological codependent with a huge lot of narcissistic tendencies um so you know where they can just um all of a sudden be nice and i even have it in my texts that um i live in a one bedroom still as I start getting my schooling for um, addiction coaching and um, of course um, financially can't really take myself out of this small apartment yet to where I can get more rooms for my children and um, instead of having any kind of compassion or understanding from my mother that seems to play and act like she is uh, very empathetic sometimes can twist it all against you the other way if you are not complying to the way that things are usually run in a narcissistic home uh, with the rhythms of the natural well we always do that with these uh, relatives every year and but what's really amazing is that um you know i even had it uh texted down with a message because my children are still there and um oftentimes i will go over and um it's just another way that narcissists will uh try to suck uh, as many people in as they can should I use Trump for instance some of you might shut it off now but if you're a fan of mine uh, and an empath you probably uh, might not mind if I talk about this but how uh, like a narcissist like Trump the more power and people that they groom and keep 
around them um th that's the more powerful that that makes them feel and everything almost kind of a hitler type uh where um you know obviously they've got some major pathological stuff or more minor whatever there's still that pathological stuff in there that they can't uh, that that uh, they have to have more and more and more and that never shuts off it's again that obsessive compulsive thing just like at a uh, non-stop control like a corkscrew that narcissists uh, usually have um, you know with everything but fortunately for people like us you know um, Especially for the scapegoats. I know the scapegoats emp or empaths get it a lot worse, um, you know, codependent, get it a lot worse in the neck and then uh, usually get shoved off more quickly even as children and cast out more quickly as children because they can see right through it and often uh, confront the narcissistic people and while well, the narcissistic people can't have that and can't have you telling other people about uh, the mask underneath of themselves, you know, that they try to keep so, uh, keep so on their faces w that are swift and per uh, persuasive and conniving and just all these great things and like your savior and all these great things or the saint, you know, um, even with some cases of extreme codependence, you know, um, where they will have to have everybody they can around them uh, conditioned and groomed and manipulated uh, enough that they can um, use them like puppets in their ordinary game of life. So, um, I hate to burst anybody's bubble here. But I knew, I know that you people that are coming out of that bubble, like myself, um, that have been tormented all their lives uh, with different people and things, and uh, finally coming to the point where they're they are now learning about um, what these, who these people are, and what they're doing. Um, the narcissist will either get bored with the person and go on, which is also the third, uh, the third uh, cir of the circle in the abuse cycle where I was stating earlier, where it goes past the devaluing until you feel like you don't even know who you are anymore, and this person has completely taken over your mind, like where you have to think like the narcissist thinks because they will allow no other way or any other beliefs of your own that might stand in the way of them have controlling over you. Um, so anyways, the other circle is uh, the discard stage finally, where that's when they get bored or whatever, and they think that they can find more or better um, sources of supply, and will often, maybe like the cheater, you know, who starts going out on the weekends, um, finding somebody else or something else that feeds us supply even better than we do. Uh, and that can also be done when um, all of a sudden they just drop you and don't want anything to do with you. Or maybe it's slyer than that, you know, just whatever that they can. Um, and this is the really hard one too, is the discard where maybe you're catching on to them or what they're doing, you know, or reading books or learning. And then uh, they can't have that. There is nothing about that that they cannot, that they can um, want because that's when they lose the control and they have to keep that control. That is the name of their game or they don't exist. And obviously you can't have that because like in any addict, you, um, your survival mode revolves around that drug and if you cannot have that then uh you know that's basically what your whole world revolves around that's oftentimes uh during a relationship with one you will get the constant phone calls where are you at what are you doing um 
you know, why, why are you doing this, and, um, and just to keep you constantly under their watch and scrutiny, um, because you are their fix, you know, I mean, you know, but like anything that you do try to make your fix is really not, um, healthy, and of course, after a while, that's just kind of going to crumble because it's really more harmful than ha than creating um, and that healthy part within ourselves and healing that part and really starting to get to the point where we start accepting and get getting through that denial that um, I know it's really hard for some of us empaths as well. Because we have such a hard time seeing that anybody can be that uh, nasty. Although it's right in front of our faces. And, you know, it, it might take a lot of time to process that and go through that. And to maybe start meditating EMDR or therapy or whatever. To really start um, breaking through that uh, and connecting. And connecting to that love place inside of ourselves, really starting to connect to uh, uh, us, you know, our inner hearts and everything, because we have not ever been able to have that connection. We've always been disconnected from that as even children. Um, to come back to that place where you really start realizing that you um, are a person, and it's okay to be a person, and uh, you are actually real, you know, and uh, you are not just some piece of uh, shit trash to kick off to the side and like invisible or whatever anymore, that you do have a place in this world and that we can make a difference, you know? So, um, yeah, I just uh, kind of wanted to put out there that it's really hard this holiday because my, um, it's the, uh, third, it will make it three years in a row, um, ever since, um, I myself got on the methamphetamine with an, another, uh, alcoholic, drug addict, narcissistic boyfriend that I had, um, and, um, lost my children uh, you know, in the early phases when I, when I finally left that abuser, he knocked me out before I had a ch chance to get a hold of my addiction again, which who knows could have got worse. Maybe it was a blessing in disguise. God does have a reason for everything, but even though it does seem really unfair sometimes, uh, sometimes we do have to go through pain in our lives, but we do not have to stay there. Okay. Uh, we can learn to forgive ourselves and go on even when we might have these toxic people still hanging on to us like, you know, with that kind of control-ish. But we can also break out of that control and um, just be cautious. Um, it, you know, it is a process, but you can start eliminating those people from your lives. Uh, be it boyfriend or whatever, you know, maybe if you're in the place right now, uh, like I am still about learning about addiction and relapse and, um, you know, but I think the thing with my family was, is, is that as, um, I fall more out of their grips, uh, be it whether they boot me out the door or whatever, I can still come to that place um, back in my own home, my own solitary, uh, world or whatever, where I can still go out and, uh, visit with other people if I want. Um, you know, I don't have to constantly obsess, uh, with guilt and shame, uh, with my children and this family that puts more of that guilt and shame on me, just feeds off of that and, like, you know... Uh, just pulling more away from that is really, really healthy. Um, and confronting them uh, with this past few weeks that I am going to be um, doing another, starting another career out here, which is not just driving Amish anymore. Um, 
it's going to I'm going to be an addiction coach and that's another place where I think they really 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 uh, keep the people in their family unit under their puppetry or whatever you know their control because uh, well you know my son isn't doing too well right now he's uh, using some things uh, because he, he cannot stand it either but he does not know exactly what to do about it or to move on um, you know not saying that I can change um, everybody or other people in that family that might be using and that uh, the of course head units completely ignore um, make excuses about and just totally enable it um, that's where they don't really like me coming in and stepping in there and um, because that would change another part of their big control that they have going on over there so um, I think it was it's important that I did this video today because although it can be extremely painful when you do start um, standing up to what is right for you and other people that you love um, even though I might not be able to get maybe even now as they're almost all adults um, you know almost now all over 18 my children um, you know when they stand up and say well you can't get me to not do this or not do that if I want but just try to be that role model and be like hey you know I've been there done that or maybe even if you haven't if you're just watching this to learn um, you cannot change other people you have to kind of just let them go and I'm not saying just walk away forever or whatever because in your hearts what you want to do is you love them and you want to help them but just kind of like let go and let God like just take your hands your controlling hands off their neck or whatever and be like you have to stop this now you know you have to let your fingers go and your hands go and just put them away and down and let go of yourself and your need to control that and um you know like with myself just learning more um about addiction and learning this coaching and just do a lot of prayer and meditation and stuff and know that um that is their choice um and it's going to be like that as i teach clients as well um, it's going to be the client's choice. I'm not going to be a therapist or a counselor or, you know, go really back to your childhoods or anything like that. My point as a coach is going to be to, um, maybe kind of hold your hand through it a little bit and be a guide as to where and ask you questions about what, um, you might feel is prohibiting your progress and what steps that you might need to take forward to um, set those goals for yourself that you might need to to do in order for this you know change to come about but it is not in my realm to try to persuade you or give you advice on how to change and I think that's really great about coaching because I'm not really a type of person like that anyways although I know that I that I myself and we all still have uh, some controlling strategies that we have gained uh, growing up you know just basically control uh, dramas that we all use to defend ourselves and to survive but I'm talking more on even on more of a thriving level where we can put those control dramas down and we can really look on ahead to what we really need and um, get through the things that we are stuck on so we can really uh, reap the rewards in the end. So thank you for listening today and have a beautiful one. Peace.